All right, folks, so I'm back now. I've created my own profile and um, of course I've kept it confidential now. So the one that you see in the video, I've already deleted that. So even if you try to use it, it will not work anymore. Okay, um, now let's start with the actual coding on the Terraform. I'll go back to my Visual Studio and I've already created a project folder Terraform Learning Demo. In that I'll create a new file by the name ec2 instance dot tf so every file every code file that you create has will carry an extension of dot tf on terraform we'll need few more files let's keep our structure ready we'll create one more file called main dot tf i'll show you one by one what these files are then i'll create variables dot tf and then i'll create a user data dot sh this will be the shell script all right so let's start one by one so this is going to be our main file where we'll write the code the the whole infrastructure code and that will execute and create the resources for us main.tf this is the first uh, configuration the main configuration where we actually tell terraform who is our service provider going to be in our case it is going to be aws and if you remember I showed you how to create the profile. So I'll go, I'm going to use that profile name that I've created. In my case, I created another profile. Let me just quickly check the name so that it's not. And this is the profile name that I've given. Now, normally till earlier versions of Terraform, there was no need to create, give a region as a parameter. But however, in the latest versions, it does ask us to write down or mention the region name as well though it still exists in our configuration profile but it still asks for this right when i tried to compile this code before i created this video i was getting error and then i found from the documentation that you need to specify this region as a parameter okay i'll i'll show you what i'll do is i'll comment this code and i'll show you why i'm why i'm saying you need region right let's see that so this is the first uh, first uh, stage of our Terraform code. The next is the EC2 instance. Now this is where I will create the resource. So the, to create a resource, I'll use the word keyword as resource. And the resource type that I'm going to create first is, I'll create a security group. Now, how do you know what resources you have to create for each uh, resource type? So again, you have to refer to the documentation, the Terraform documentation. Right. From this Terraform documentation, you will be able to, if you see this AWS provider documentation, you will come to know exactly if I go here, uh, I'm creating an EC2 instance. Where is my... So under that resources. So if you go, data sources is something I told you, right? If you have to fetch the data from other resource, here you are creating a resource. So if you see this, the whole configuration, right? How and what all resources are required, arguments, everything is provided over here. You can just refer to this and it, it, it is pretty much very, very sequential uh, documentation and it will give you a very easy understanding of what all things are required and how do you need to create those resources okay and what arguments and everything is provided over here i will okay here if you see what is an ami we'll see this in our example how do we create an ami what is an uh, instance aws instance okay in this case they have given an example of ubuntu we are also going to use the same Ubuntu, okay? So how you can have a habit of using this documentation, which is what I do normally. And it, it gives me a very pretty much uh, idea and view of what exactly needs to be done. Otherwise, it's there's no way you can remember all the commands and syntax and the temp templates that they have provided. So it's a full documentation. Now, this is the doc documentation that I'm using for AWS. Similarly, they have for other providers as well, which you can very easily refer from here. Okay, so let's go back to our code. Most of the things I'm going to show you on the video, so you, it, will want, it won't take much effort for you to go and search for these basic materials. I'll provide you over here in this video. 
Now, this name, this is a this is the type that they have provided in the Terraform website itself. So this you cannot change. This is how you have to give because it tells you under this resource what type you are going to create. And this name is an identifier which you can choose to give any name that you wish to give, right? But make sure whatever identifier you define, you then accordingly need to use it whenever you want to call this from any of your automation tools or any further code down the line. The next parameter is name. So the name will use the same name. You can also create tags. We'll, we'll create a tag so it enables us to identify what exactly these, uh, these resource type does. Now, what is the security group? So we are creating the security group so that it enables us to SSH into our EC2 instance on AWS. As I told you, I'm going to run this code from my MacBook terminal locally. And from local machine to AWS console to connect, I need to do is uh, SSH and to enable that SSH, I need to enable certain protocols and ports. And that is why we need to create these security groups. Then we'll need a VPC ID. Now, what is this VPC ID? So we need VPC ID and subnets, which are required when you create a EC2 instance on AWS. So let's check that out. What I'm trying to do currently is creating this security group. If you see on the console, how the security group appears, right? So these are the two security groups that we have right now. After we run this code, you will see this name also will appear over here once I execute this code, right? So there you will see third one more security layer created. Now under that, if you see these are some VPC IDs. Under your login, you will have different VPC IDs. So make sure you use that and don't use the one that I'm showing you in this video. But you just go here or your VPCs and you will be able to see. Copy this ID from here. For now, just go with it what exactly the documentation says, then we can understand later on what exactly this means and how, what we need to, what is the use of it, right? There's more details to it, every every parameter, why it is required, whether we need it or we don't need it, we can go ahead and elaborate more and more for the deep dive into it. However, for now, for this demonstration, I think this should suffice. What all things we need as a basic uh, 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 prerequisites to create any resource on any cloud platform. So one is VPC ID. Now, another thing that I need is subnet. Now, if I keep writing this code over here, you know, it will become a very lengthy code, right? I have to keep repeating this every time line by line. Instead of doing this, what I'll do is, I'll, there's something, there's a concept of variables in Terraform, and that's why I created this file. What I'll do is, instead of writing these values over here, these are going to remain common. So these standard common values, I can store it in my variables file. And every time when I run this code, I'll just call that variable name over here instead of calling this value. So it will automatically refer to that name from this file. So how do we use these variables is, so we'll create a variable and we'll assign a name. Now this can be any name. You can choose to give any identifier, okay? But as I said, just remember what whatever identifiers you use, you need to use the same identifiers in your automation tools that you create. This is the default VPC from AWS. Then type will always be string. And the default name that you are going to call is VPC ID. This is the VPC ID that we are going to use, right? So now I've created this variable and this is the VPC ID, the variable name. So what I'll do is, now I'll go to my EC2 instance. Instead of giving this name over here, I'll just directly call where.vpc ID. Where is a standard uh, attribute and using that attribute you can then call is a standard property and using that property you can call the identifier that you want to uh, use in, in this file. Now similarly what we'll do is we'll go back to variables again. I'll also create a subnet and I'll give the name subnet ID. Again this is an identifier you can choose to give whatever names you want to give and this is going to be my default subnet from AWS again. Type is going to be string. And the default, I'm sorry. Default, now where is this subnet ID? So if I go back over here, you'll see subnets. 
So there are multiple subnets provided, but the VPC IDs are common. So you can choose, a, select any one subnet that should be fine. So I'll just copy this subnet ID and I'll paste it over here. That's it. So first part is done. Uh, in the main, we have provided the server provider name and then in EC2 instance. Now, few more things that we'll have to do here is we have to provide the ingress and egress. What is ingress and egress? So I have just copied this code from uh, the uh, Terraform uh, documentation. So this basically ingress is whatever comes into our network and egress is whatever exits from our network. Now in this case, it is not our network, but it is the cloud network, right? Where we are spinning up these resources. So from that context, this is what ingress and egress means. Now this is a common port, standard port that I'm going to open, which is a TCP port for SSH, which I said, we'll need to use SSH into our EC2 instance. And the egress is, we'll use minus one so that it allows and accepts any protocol, right? Whether it is TCP or whatever protocol it is, even if it is VP4, IP4, IP6, it will allow anything. So that's why I'm using uh, minus one. And then we can define tags. Tags are always very useful. I'll just, I'm sorry. Name and uh, I'll use the same name. So it's very easy to identify. All right, so that's the first part. So we are going to create this security group. We have the main, we have the variables. I think that's all we need. Now let's run this and create this. So how do we run the code? Now I am into my folder where I've created these files. You can see this, okay? The first command that I have to do is initialize Terraform. And for that, I have to write init. Init, what init does is, it will initialize all the plugins that you have, you are using in your code, right? So it will, it will check for the profile, it will check for the providers, and it will pull the plugins, and accordingly, it will then try to create those plugins. So that's the first thing that it does. So it initializes that in the background for you. You can see it finds the latest version of uh, HashiCorp, that is Terraform, then it installs that. Once it is successfully initialized, you'll get this message. The next that you do is Terraform plan. Now this will create those plugins for you. Now notice something over here. You see this error? What it says, and region is required. And this is what I was trying to tell that in this new version, you need to specify this region very clearly. So I'm using US East one, I'll save this. And now I'll again clear this and I'll run this Terraform plan again and this time it should work. There you go, All right? So it has created plan one to add, to change, zero to destroy. Now, the next command that I want to run is actually apply. Apply will actually create the EC2 instance security group, sorry, if you see here, if I go to security groups, over here you will see only two names right now, right? Once I run this apply, you will see it will try to spin up and create that security group for me. Enter a value. Remember, you will always have to type yes. It will be only accept yes as a value. So I do yes, now it is creating the group. Now I'll go here and I'll just refresh and you'll see the security group has been created. So that's how easy it is. Okay, now what I'll do is I'll destroy this because we'll create again. Okay, we'll go, we'll try to create the whole EC2 instance in a proper way. So I will destroy this. It will again ask me, yes, Done. So one resource has been destroyed. Now you'll go and refresh again. You will see this value is gone now. There you go. All right, so I hope so far you have understood how this is working. So let's go further and now we'll create a key pair, right? That's the most important part. Now key pair is required <laughs> to log into your EC2 instance. If you want to do SSH, you need a key, right? The PEM file and the public key to log into the instance. So how do we create that? Let's see that. 